Good morning, grade 6 students. This is your teacher, Miss Rita. I hope you are all doing well and I hope to see you very soon. Today, we will do a quick revision about everything that we already explained till now. So we are going to review lesson 1, states of matter and lesson 2, changes of states. So first, we will start by correcting the homework. We will review the states of matter and then we will review the changes in the states of matter. Let's start by correcting the homework. Please make sure to copy the correction on your copybook. We have aluminum melts at 660 degrees Celsius. Specify if you can find another substance that melts at this temperature. The answer is no, because every substance has its own melting and freezing point. So we can't find two substances with the same melting points. Part B, specify the freezing point of aluminum. We said that the melting point is equal to the freezing point, which means that the freezing point is equal to 660 degrees Celsius. Part C, Specify the state of aluminum when the surrounding temperature is 300 degrees Celsius. So as I previously mentioned, we have to compare this temperature to the figure. 300 is below 660, which means it's a solid. And we do the same for the rest, so we get 590 degrees Celsius, it's a solid. 668, it's a liquid and 700 degrees Celsius is also a liquid. What are the three states of matter? They are solid, liquid, and gas. Now let's move on to the characteristics of solids, liquids, and gases. As you can see in the picture in front of you, the particles in a solid are close to each other, the particles in a liquid are not so close and the particles in a gas are far from each other. The shape and volume of a solid are both definite, which means that they do not change. The shape of a liquid is not definite, so it takes the shape of the container and the volume of a liquid is definite. For a gas, both the shape and volume are indefinite, which means that they take the shape and the volume of the container. We already said that viscosity is a characteristic of liquids. It's the resistance of the particles to flowing. We said that if a liquid has high viscosity, it means the particles have high resistance and the liquid flows slowly, like honey. If a liquid has low viscosity, it means the particles have low resistance and the liquid flows quickly, like water. We said that one characteristic of gases is pressure, and it's the force of the gas particles on the walls of the container. To calculate pressure, we have to divide the force of the gas by the area of the container. And the unit of pressure is the pascal. We also said that if the number of gas particles inside a container increases, it means we will have a bigger force on the walls of the container and the pressure increases. If the temperature of a gas increases, it means the particles will move faster if they move faster, they will hit the walls of the container harder and the pressure will also increase. The last thing that we already explained is melting and freezing. These are two changes in the states of matter. Melting is the change from solid to liquid and freezing is the change from liquid to solid. We said that when melting takes place, it means that the solid is absorbing or gaining energy so that the particles can move apart. However, in freezing, a liquid 
loses energy or releases energy it becomes colder the particles move closer and transform into a solid the melting and freezing points are temperatures that are equal to each other the only difference is that a melting point it's a temperature above which a solid starts to melt However, a freezing point is a temperature below which a liquid starts to freeze. And we said that different substances have different melting and freezing points. So you can never find two different substances with the same melting point. Finally, I need you to copy exercises 1, 2, and 3 on your copybook and try to solve them as homework for next time.